Hey guys, it's your girl Kindy, and today we are playing Sonic the Hedgehog 1 Decompilation. Basically, this is a version of the Christian Whitehead port of Sonic 1, which has been remade for PC with improved, and it has mod support, so the mod support has resulted in lots of amazing mods and overall in my opinion something better than Sega will ever make for Sonic Origins. I've compiled myself a few mods for this resulting in what in my opinion is a better remaster of Sonic 1. We've got improved graphics, mechanics from the later Sonic games such as the elemental shield from Sonic 3 as well as the insta shield. And overall, it's just a much better game now. And it's not buggy, unlike Sonic Origins. Sega couldn't even master the... Sega couldn't even fix their own original game. I guess they wanted to take some lessons from Nintendo. Sega's mindset must have been, Oh, let's just copy what Nintendo's doing now since our consoles failed. No, that mindset is what gave us Sonic Origins. Thankfully now, thanks to... ...modders and stuff, we now have a much better version. And I've actually gotten versions of Sonic... I've done this for each classic game that was featured in Sonic Origins. We've got Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, and Sonic CD. All remastered, better mechanics, and overall improved better than Sega did with Sonic Origins. Some of the mods I'm using are Sonic 1 Forever, Sonic 1 Forever Expansion Pack, and Sonic and Sonic Forever Mania Light, which basically improves all the sprites to make them reminiscent of Sonic Mania. And I also tweaked some of the in-game settings to give us features from other Sonic games, like the Elemental Shield from Sonic 3, the Insta Shield as well from Sonic 3, and that... Uh, let's find a spring. Never mind, it's shown right there. The, the little thing he does when he's falling, like in Sonic CD. There's also the CD dash if you press up. I forget what it's called, but it, it's pretty cool. There's also the spin dash, which some of you are going to get mad at me for putting the spin dash in Sonic 1, but uh, to each their own. Because, like I said, this... Actually, I don't think I did mention it, but this version of Sonic 1... Well, each of them, really. Sonic 2, 3, CD, 1... They're all fully customizable. Like, if you don't want the spin dash in Sonic 1, you can just disable it. Or you can enable it. It's disabled by default, but I... Because it's Sonic 1, but I decided to enable it because I... I wanted the spin dash. It just feels better to me. There's so many things you can tweak, like if you don't want the elemental shields... Everything in this decompilation and remake is... This remake decompilation, it's, it's all tweakable. If you don't want all the things I'm showing, like the CD style falling, or you do want the um, spin dash, you can tweak all of it. It's really customizable, and especially mods too, allow for even more customization. So really, it does what Sega should have done, and leaves the remastering up to the fans. See, if you want the elemental shields, you can basically make your own 
definitive Sonic game. If you want the elemental shields from Sonic 3 but don't want the spin dash, you can have that. Make it your own. Fans do what Sega don't. Yay, let's go fast. Oi. Like I said, I think some of you guys are going to give me shit for enabling the spin dash in Sonic 1. But as I said, this is entirely tweakable. Oh. Crap. Sadly, these decompilations are a little bit hard to set up. Sonic 3 is definitely more easier, but it really is kind of hard to set up. Though once it is set up, it's a party. It's like, like Mario 64's PC port. It's hard to set up, but once it's set up, you really feel accomplished, like you, you've done something. Ooh, fire shield! That'll be perfect. That's perfect. The fire shield for this place. See how perfect it is? No! Okay, well, it can also get you screwed over, but, uh... You get my point. It just shows that... You can tweak the game to your own, like... And some of you may think, oh, well, the elemental shield makes the game way too easy now. Well, you can make the game harder, too. There's plenty of mods, like, uh, Sonic CD has a mod called, I think, Psychotic Egg Hard Mode. Which is like a hard mode for the game. So as said, you can make the game harder, easier, anything you want. I like this too, because it means that each gameplay, you can do something different. Want the elemental shields for one gameplay, but want don't want them for the next. You can tweak each gameplay so that it's all different. And so you have different, and so you have a unique experience each time.
Hence, with Sonic 1, you can even tweak how many Chaos Emeralds there are. Like, if you want the original 6, you can do that, but if you want 7 and Super Sonic, you can also do that. As said, it's your game. Just do what you want. As you can see, I am clearly sucking at this, but, uh... Whatever. We're just gonna beat Marble Zone, and then I'm gonna end it off. Ah. Out of my way, spikes. The electric... Oh, never mind. Oh, secret. Dunna. Oh. Wait, so do I not go that way, or...? I haven't played this in a while, so leave me alone. You're not my dad. Look at Sonic. There we go. I think it's called Peel Out when Sonic does that, I don't Oh, and it worked on against the lava, so now I can walk in the lava too. I don't know if that's just the invincibility or not, but, uh... Whatever. Yeah. Fire shield. Wait, do the fire shields carry over? Oh no, they don't. I mean, do, the, do any of the shields carry over, but they don't. 
I guess I would have been overpowered if they did carry over. Since you could get a bubble shield in the water level and continue using it. So. Then again, if they don't provide bubble shields in the water levels, that would be just cheap. Oh. Whatever, we're gonna end the video here. That's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.